I wasn't gonna get into this shit, but yeah, it keeps popping up on my news feed. Keep seeing it on YouTube. Briefly delving into the whole incident with, it's the Taiga video and American Cholo, but you know, it, it went into something else. So um, basically my, my main issue with this whole thing is the culture vulture that came in and really heightened the, the tension that there already was. And you know, that's my problem with motherfuckers like Adam 22 through his platform and people not holding him accountable. Well, I love the way American Cholo and Bozo came to his, you know, to his platform with demands, absolutely. And of course the coward motherfucker wasn't there. And um, it's people like him that throw the rock and hide the hand, so to say. And they have absolutely no idea the type of tension that they can create. Because, you know, he's a privileged white guy, lives in his bubble. You know, he doesn't have to, to, to see the drama, the shit that goes down in our communities. Because unfortunately, things, the way things unfold, the outcome of things often is violence. Brown and black communities. That's what it comes down to. And that's what we, we you know, that's what I've been, you know, I got love for my black brothers and sisters. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm for unity for both brown and black. Because unfortunately, we've hurt too long, you know, and, and motherfuckers like him, they don't they don't respect our humanity. They don't see our value, particularly among his staff. Who does he staff? He knows who he has and why a brown and a black man, because that's his audience. We give him a platform. And lately, I've seen a few uh, brown YouTubers. You know, we, we've been uh, talking about this motherfucker, but uh, a few of them saying, you know, I'm going to keep tuning in and seeing I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I see I see anything pop up from that channel and I keep scrolling, you know, um, his staff, if they're smart enough, because what happened that day? He steps out, he runs off cowardly and, you know, who mops up his shit? People of color had something happen to them. You know, does he value his staff? Absolutely not, because the following day he'd replace them. You know, he sees them as disposable. And that's typical of a racist motherfucker like him, a racist motherfucker that does not value brown and black people exploits he exploits them exploits conflict controversy why because it's newsworthy he doesn't see the human value in in our communities you know like for example people don't you know people say some rap shit i'm like a few days ago like i heard a black brother who works at a prison it came to his ears you know he doesn't sound like he's into rap i don't know but he says you know i'm sure he probably has a family to go home to behind the walls you know all it takes is sometimes there's already tension and you just need an incident here and there and it has ripple effects you know isolated incident you know like there's been shit going on with the with the food with the street vendors um so usually what ends up happening is vulnerable people in both communities somebody waiting at a bus stop or gang members you know get involved into it and, and yeah you know we make headlines unfortunately and guess what somebody who says hey it's newsworthy they start talking about it again and they continue to profit off of it that's my problem culture vulture motherfuckers like adam 22 and besides you know this motherfucker has a history of his his also his moral character um i heard that there's accusations of him that he's made statements about um uh, not quite sure not gonna quote but i'm sure there's receipts out there online about something within a sexual context and underage uh, ugh. another reason why you know i wouldn't you know, and I don't know. I don't know why people don't hold them accountable for that, and yet they show up to do interviews with this with this devil. That's what he is. He's a devil. Um, so going back to what happened previously with the whole Gil incident, um, so Gil took it upon himself. He has a platform and goes by the name American Cholo on YouTube. And we don't have platforms, you know. We don't have leadership as Latinos. So I give it up to Gil that, you know, he he and Taiga sat down at Power 106 and had a diplomatic conversation. And so people have asked me, why do you have that video on your channel? Particularly, that's why, because it sells them to see, you know, Latino community come forward and hold someone accountable. Now, I wouldn't say it's specifically like Taiga Taiga type of thing. I think it it's it's beyond the Taiga video, which I saw, you know, it's culturally insensitive. And there were a few videos that also came out prior to this one kind of a similar context in which you know there was they were mocking latino culture with exaggerated stereotypes that were ridiculing the culture so um you know much respect to taiga in the sense that he came forward did the you know he did the correct thing of apologizing and he took it down you know much much respect to him so something fruitful came out of that conversation and that's why i kept that video up because it's rare to see for one latinos you know come forward and hold someone accountable that's rare i've never really seen you know something like that happen a lot of people underestimated kill 
you know and the fact that it happened at power 106 um so the thing is they opened up a line of communication i thought and i had never seen something like that so i kept the video up um it's nice to see a, a brown and black man you know bring resolution to a conflict in a diplomatic manner not cutting each other's throat you know and them handling it you know so um let's see so the following day um you know i i i gave it up to gil for how he handled that situation and for being that voice when nobody came to the front lines right because it, like i said it's it's also beyond the music video like people are already getting upset you know and then what ends up happening is fingers back and forth and how do we resolve things violence unfortunately um so on the on the street level you know there's tension in that sense like people go back and forth and then where else does tension pop off behind the walls you know that's where it always pops off unfortunately so where was i going with this that um the following day you know um i am also critical and i do not agree with the way how gil the interview he had the following day that was really unnecessary and that positive energy from that interview from at power 106 she, you know he should have kept it going and unfortunately i feel like he sabotaged it with um the following day he had that interview he basically he made himself vulnerable and there's a lot of people that want to divide and, and you know see us in conflict because it's newsworthy people like um Tariq which I'll you know I, I, another motherfucker with a questionable character in the sense that all right you can preach you know like here's the thing my issue if you're gonna preach you know uplift your people that's cool but if you're gonna take jabs at other communities you know like I don't see myself uplifting my brown community and then taking jabs at the black community like that's hypocritical that's we can be racist towards each other you know so that's a fucked up part and that's where I don't justify Tariq because I see him also, you know, trying to trying to sabotage any type of unity among brown and black. And now the thing with Gil, he said some shit he shouldn't have said. And it didn't sit well with me as a brown man. You know, like that's a conversation I don't think we, we should be having. Um, I, you know, this is an empire. Again, I don't, I don't think it's the, it's my place to speak on it. But the empire has the means, you know, and it, 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 when it comes to reparations, you know, I, I feel my black brothers and sisters are entitled, you know, and the empire has the means. Um, then again, you know, it's it's a conversation that should not have been had. And, and I think that energy should have been shifted towards self-reflecting, you know, like how can we open new lines of com communication? How can we, you know, strengthen them so then our platforms become more of solid, you know, solidified. And then people tap in and listen to what we have to say. We don't have to go to a culture vulture to listen to what people of color, brown and black, have to say. You know what I'm saying? So that that opportunity there that day, I, it went to shit. And um, unfortunately, there's people that are critical of Gil in a, in, a, in a negative way. I'm critical of Gil in that sense. And I don't agree with, you know, how the slur came out and, and but this is a, a point for him to reflect and also to learn and grow and, and he apologized for it you know like N N Tariq an arrogant motherfucker he would not apologize for anything you know and some people were saying he should sit down and talk with him he should not sit down and talk with him because I don't think anything fruitful would come out of a conversation speaking to someone that's as prejudiced as uh or you know as uh Nasheed is now with uh, Gil, with American Cholo, I don't think he's racist. I just think he has very conservative views and they don't reflect the brown community. Um, I don't think that way. And I just want people to know a lot of us, we don't hold those those conservative views as Latinos. Um, but I did, you know, I, I am, I do appreciate that he came forward because nobody else will. So I just thought it was also funny how there were a few Latinos that were criticizing Gil. And I'm, and I'm referring to like more the, 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 the square Latinos the Starbucks intellectuals, the keyboard activists, the gatekeepers that, you know, stay being gatekeepers. But then when shit goes down, <laughs> you know, there's no leadership, you know, in anything, in anything aside from this incident, just observation, I think, you know, we have a lot of gatekeepers in our community as well. And the only time they come out is to police. It seems like, you know, that's the reason they, you know, they, they get educated and then they come out and police and tear down other brown people, you know, um, unfortunately, you know, it'd be nice to see people, um, you know, someone who holds knowledge, take the initiative, a, in a leadership position, open up 
a YouTube channel to drop knowledge, you know? There's a big identity crisis among Latinos, and I'd like to see us talk more openly about race, and, and you know, it could also be like a learning experience for Latinos who haven't been exposed to that, that are older. Also, something else I wanted to mention that Gil, Gil is an older Latino. He's an older Latino, and I can, I, I can see where he's coming from. I can identify with him. As an older Latino, we experience racism differently. We've experienced prejudice, daily microaggressions in a different way than younger Latinos have. And he's older than I am. So, you know, the challenge is, uh, you know, being Latino, we had no platforms back then. And, you know, the, the way media has always vilified, ridiculed and mocked our culture, reduced us to nothing but stereotypes, you know. And, um, you know, I, I get it. That's where like a lot of the 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 cholo culture came out of because you look in history there's always been a, a stigmatizing term whether it was cholo greaser bandido but it's always a constant reminder that um you're an outsider you know to stigmatize you for that brown skin and um you know homeboy lived racism he the wisdom the knowledge he holds it's life experience. So I respect that, you know. He might not be knowledgeable on theory and history and, and maybe that's why he his you know political views come off as so conservative at times. And I don't share his views, you know, but um they don't reflect the brown community and um but I don't think homeboy is racist at heart. And like he says, you know, he he you know, I I, I can see when somebody, you know, fucks up and like any human being makes mistakes and they apologize. It's a matter of, of growing from those mistakes, you know. So um, what ends up following after that interview, which I think everything went kind of went to shit after that interview. Um, and I'm speaking about the, the interview that followed the day after Power 106. And I, I think that's reason. Actually, no, the reason the Power 106 interview got taken down and I re-uploaded it was because um, that's for Tariq and... Um, this, this devil culture vulture steps in um so basically to chopped up this video from months back and i think gil is like telling a and sharing some anecdote or something that happened now he's not trying to he's not throwing out a slur he's criticizing someone that you know said a slur that they shouldn't have said but the thing is he said it and this time you have to be very cautious so i think that's a learning point for gil the thing is the video got chopped up and you just hear that word but you don't hear the full context of the whole video so guess what you hear those few seconds and you hear it over and over the thing is that it was to paint a picture of him as though he were racist so it was taken out of context and then guess who comes in and says hey this is newsworthy i'm gonna profit off of this it's gonna create tension it's gonna create controversy at the end of the day i don't have to deal with the heat of it my staff the people that are gonna be the brown and black people that are going to be at odds with each other a he's going to bring in money for me so he took advantage of it and of course he reaps the benefits of it while we we antagonize one another we attack each other and unfortunately violence and in, in many cases unfortunately ends up being the outcome so um that's my problem with this motherfucker and through his platform through the no jumper um the video becomes viral the vi the video that Tariq puts out of american cholo and now it's adam because nothing goes through Ad you know goes through that platform without adam authorizing it without him signing it off so of course he approved it he wants to see us at odds everything was cool from that power 106 conversation um but it really went viral with the whole no jumper shit and just look at him for what he is he's a fucking culture vulture a racist and well now you know it's, it's a matter of us like how do we build bridges you know build bridges amongst both communities and you know we don't we don't gain anything from this and i got nothing but love for my black brothers and sisters and um oh one last thing as well um also there you know Gil was getting criticized for being central american um the fact is that the man grew up a Mexican American, he lives a Chicano experience. I cannot take that from him. All right, guess what? On the West Coast, on the West Coast, when someone looks at someone with a brown face, what do they say? Automatically assume 
Mexican. And guess what? The next thing is I don't get asked to get, you know, put in that box. And when I do, the stereotypes that come with it as well apply. So guess what? I have to hold it down. I have to address things. I have to speak up. And guess what? A lot of us Central Americans, we've learned to we've learned to hold it down. We don't throw our, our Mexican brothers and sisters under the bus. And we have to deal with the same stereotypes. They get thrown at us. And we don't get asked. We get shoved into it. So much love to him and much respect to Bozo and to American Cholo for speaking up for us. Now, um, I just hope um, from this point, it's a point of reflection for Latinos as well. Um, to, to take leadership in the sense of opening up. We have YouTube. It's a new platform and it's it's a matter of just someone, you know, coming forward and, and taking that that leadership of educating your own people. You know, I, on my channel, I try to do so. Um, most of my videos are in are in Spanish. I'm going to try to put up more videos in English. But, you know, that's why we go to school. I go to school to to empower my people to drop knowledge because, yes, there is a cultural identity crisis among brown folk. We've been robbed of an identity and um so, you know, um, that's my objective with my channel. So check out shit that I have on my channel. And, um, you know, hopefully you get to see my perspective as well as a Salvadoran, as a Latino. And yeah, that's why we go to school, not to not to have degrees and not no knowledge and theory to police and tear down and gatekeep on other Latinos. Because that's what I see, you know, Starbucks, intellectuals. Um, that, that's what that's what I that's what I see abundant in this generation. Starbucks, intellectuals. Edgar coalitions dropping n bombs on mixtapes, deep identity crisis. So yeah, somebody has to like, and yeah, you know, and, and to the to the black YouTubers, a lot a lot of black YouTubers that connected with a lot of brown folk. It was interesting and it was nice to see that you know we made use of this medium YouTube to connect and build bridges. And um, I was glad to see that there was a lot more positive than negative. You know that, that we're able to to understand each other. We don't need a, a white person and you know use their medium to be able to have lines of communication so yeah with that just a point of reflection there is leadership open up a channel if you have knowledge you know share that knowledge you know and let's unite let's build bridges we might have slight differences but there are a lot of common struggles when the blm movement went down you know there the, the way uh, when the blm movement went down there were a lot of latinos a lot of brown folk on the on the, on the front lines as well why? Because there's many of us that we know what it feels like to lose a loved one at the hands of police. Um, you know, my family fled, fled state violence and, you know, for the longest have fear of men in uniform. And uh, there's a distant cousin of mine that got that got gunned down, it made headlines um, Andres Guardado in the city of Gardena and I will say I had never seen anything like it it's a you know we can come together I have seen it and it's a beautiful thing unfortunately out of a tragedy but um I guess you know I saw unity in the city of Gardena I don't know if this goes on in other areas in LA but um you know what there were black brothers and sisters out there with us on the front lines and that's something I'm, I'm always gonna be grateful and in that same manner i owe it back when shit goes down because we go through the same struggles we go through the same shit and we have come together in unity and it's beautiful so you know it's a matter of keeping that going and so i i have seen it i have seen it happen so i know we can come together you know um much love to all my my brown brothers and sisters my black brothers and sisters and united we stand strong, you know, much love.